Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. I am so sorry about the delay. Twitch was being El Lamo. So thank you all for coming by tonight for the slightly later start time of Eberron, Ashes of the Last War. My name is Obsidia, everyone's favorite Death Knight and the DM and writer of this campaign. So happy to have you all and I'm really happy and ecstatic, some would say, to most importantly have these incredible players here to join me. So I, we will do a round of introductions do some announcements, and I will give you a session recap before we hop right back into the quote-unquote shit. And without further ado, let's pass it on over to Paige. <laughs> yeah, that's me! Hello everyone, my name is Yulia, also known as Royal Knight VT on both Twitch and Twitter. I play a lot of variety games, a lot of JRPGs, do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, ne or in two weeks, or less than two weeks, technically, on September 5th is going to be my one-year streaming anniversary, so come on by and hang out with me. It's going to be a lot of fun, so thank you. Mega hype. Hard to believe we've had a year of Elf Princess. And yeah. <laughs> we, we have already erected the shrines. It is time to unveil them. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. <laughs> And thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Let's pass it on over to Sif slash Sess. Keep those three letters going. Hi, everybody. I'm Sif. Role-playing as Sess, the, the punchy cat girl. Uh, I do art. I play games. I'm sometimes Spider-Man, sometimes a ball, all times dumbass. Always a cat. Uh, <laughs> I, Sexy's my but, favorite. <laughs> Can't, I, I, someone get these cat ears off. They welded it on my head while I was sleeping. It's not a funny prank. It's not, I was the first to fall asleep <laughs> at the sleepover. Uh, anyways, uh, that's me. Check me out on Twitch and Twitter. I'm kind of leaning back on streaming, but I'll, I'll try it for you guys. I love you guys. Oh, that's me. Thank you, Sif. You definitely should go check him out. A great artist, great person, great entertainer. Very wonderful. And without further ado, we pass it to everybody's favorite trauma baby. Let's go, Cliff slash Leetro. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leetro the Bronze. I'm one quarter dragon. Uh, I like to play RPGs and other stuff back on my channel. Uh, mostly just been doing D&D &D lately, mostly because I'm currently looking at moving. Hopefully when I do move, I will have more actually open time so where I can actually do proper streaming. Uh, I'm also working on getting a new model made and a new possible form. Uh, for my VTuber self, so look forward to that in the future. Quote unquote, this isn't even his final form. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Definitely go check out Leetro, an amazing DM. He runs a game, he runs several games involving just about everybody here in different forms and combinations, one on Friday and one on Sunday. So be sure to check it out. Very great storyteller, very fun times. Um, and we're very happy to have them. And then finally, it is, of course, Jubilee slash Mari. <laughs> Howdy, all Jubilee here. <laughs> um, my name is Maribel. I am a Hobbit VTuber. You can check out my Twitch at Maribel Bramble. And we like to do comfy, cozy streams. We like to uh, read books and do crafts and sometimes we cook sometimes we play games it's kind of a toss-up but you always know you're gonna get some comfy vibes so yeah stop on by if that's your jam and confirm very comp currently reading jurassic park very clever girl um <laughs> the cleverest <laughs> be sure to check her out she's a very good bean a very plucky young hobbit <laughs> um and uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. I have an announcement uh, before we go into the session recap. Uh, in two weeks, well, first of all, next week, we'll be playing back on Monday again. I apologize for the alternating uh, days of Monday to Wednesday, but hopefully going forward, it'll be a little more straightened out for Mondays. And it's good that we do that because immediately following that week, uh, we are not playing at all because I'm having a surgery next Friday where I'm getting my, my Booba DLC installed. So I am not going to be in DMing condition for the next week. Um, so there will be no streams from me in any way. Uh, and I will hopefully not die. So <laughs> uh, we will return to our uh, D, uh, DM schedule or D and D scheduled hours uh, once I've recovered. So thank you all yeah, for yeah, yeah. bearing with us. 
really gives everybody a great opportunity to catch up on all those previous episodes of Ashes of the Last War on our YouTube channel that just flashed on by via Nightbot. Be sure to check it out. Um, so, previously on Ashes of the Last War, our party finished their last week of guarding the lightning rail uh, trains from Ardev to Greywall, where some people were mysteriously disappearing on them. And it seemed like they were going to get paid 200 gold for basically doing nothing for two weeks except ride the rails. Uh, our, our little kitty Paige got to talk to a friendly dragonborn uh, sorcerer who gave her some insight about the true meaning of magic. And she learned a little bit about love along the way. Um, Jubilee got to chat it up with everybody's favorite himbo Templar of the Silver Flame. Uh, who also dropped the big lore bit that he is currently married. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> um, before uh, before it, uh, we had an instance where Cliff actually met a bit of a, a bit of a fanboy, uh, a, a gnome uh, dragon marked uh, house member named Zyklos Echinitis Jingleheimer Schmidt de Civis. Not to be confused with John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt de Civis, who uh, is his father, but his name is not his name, too. <laughs> um, and who was regaling each other with tales of noble adventures and many practical jokes and pranks and being rich. Uh, and uh, as things were beginning to wind down on the final night, uh, Paige met a, a very friendly uh, human artificer girl who is also graduated from the uh, mate from the college that Paige currently attends. They talked about what it was like to go to school there. Uh, they talked about magecraft. They talked about romance novels. And Paige was uh, confronted by her father, who was this mysterious morning sickness afflicted man who kept uh, repeating over and over again, make peace and the war. And the words did not seem to make any sense. Uh, and with that, they said that they would meet up again in Greywall when, uh, when all this was over, and they would love to get to know each other better. And as everything began to wind down, the lights began to flicker, shades of green and blue and purple. And the mages in the party realized these were consistent with fey light. And as they realized that, they saw the, the uh, area around them begin to change, and riders appeared out of the smoke. Uh, or read out of the fog with gr with one green eye and one blue eye, um, and they began to fire into the train with arrows that passed through the walls before they leaped aboard and started assaulting uh, and stabbing and shooting the various uh, people aboard the train with wanton glee. The ones they would slay would have collars uh, spectrally appear around their necks and would transform into these weird fey hounds and. As this began to load into utter bedlam, um, a another figure appeared who bore all of the all of the markings and traits of the Ashbringers that Harlequin belongs to, an infamous infamous band of Siren war criminals. And she was a tall uh, wood elf with a double sided scimitar that began carving her way through the train, seemingly trying to get towards uh, Page. And the art, human artificer that we became aware of is named Sylvana Lale. And as she decapitated the dragonborn sorcerer, Drakkar, she proceeded to uh, basically spirit jump past the party to grab Sylvana's father and consume his soul with some kind of magical apparatus before leaving the train and seeing... Her father dissolved in ash before her eyes. Sylvana had an emotional meltdown as the rest of the party tried to regroup and re-engage where Cess and Jubilee were fighting for their lives against fey hunters. And when a new, another, <laughs> and a new challenger appeared in the form of a, of a, of a tall fey man wearing full plate armor with a, a mask that appeared to be like somewhat of a wolf or hunting hound, and he was wielding an enormous greatsword, which uh, you guys will be able to see once you kill him, because uh, I actually uploaded this wonderful picture that uh, our very own Cygnus 3D rendered of what his greatsword looks like. Um, but uh, yeah, and so as we engaged, we're in the, the fight for their lives. Cliff made a deal 
with Cliff, his patron, to superpower himself. And uh, he is currently bolting through the train in his form of dread. And uh, I think with all that being said, we're ready to fight. So let's hop on over to a different part of the, the map scenario. Go. There we go. All right. So, my, my lucky adventurers, we find ourselves at the top of initiative as I turn on the music once more. And I forget which, which screen I'm on. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, we have none other than LePage. Ooh, that's a me. Okay, so I'm still in shifter form, so I, I have 40 feet yep. of move. So, 30. Whoa. 30, 30, 35, 40, so 40 right here. Okay, um, so I can finally now see the other two, or well, I can sort of kind of see it. Yeah, you can see the figure is even taller than Cess, so you definitely can see him over Jubilee and Cess. Ooh, ooh, gotcha, okay. Uh, right, that's, that looks really bad. Um, I'm going to cast a magic missile. Okay, uh, okay. I'm afraid, but I'll allow it. What? What? <laughs> Cringe! That's like the best spell in the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just oh, saying, wow. why do you have to beat up the bad guy? Why is it gotta oh, be like that? Yeah, well, we could, what if he's a recruitable NPC? No, kill him. Kill him. Get him out of here. He put a collar on me. I want him out. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. As he's been damaging Cess, a spectral collar has been appearing around her throat linked up with spectral chains. That, dr that drag back to him. Oh boy, that's not good. All right. So, uh, it's Nine three of them, right? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Oh, no, you don't roll separately. It's one oh, roll what? times three. Well, there it goes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then ignore all those rolls. <laughs> so Nine straight damage to him. Okay. As your quills fly out of your hands and bury themselves inside of him. And you notice something different about when he takes damage versus all the other fey hunters you've caught. Uh, as you collide with him, um, he reacts to the damage he receives. And his, uh, his Iker is actually tinged red, unlike what the fey hunters had. So just an interesting note. Hmm. Okay, but I, I, from this distance, I can't notice any sort of, like, regenerative aspects. Yeah. Okay, okay. Anything else you would like to do? Um, that's as far as my, my things go. So I will, I will leave it at that. Okay. All right. This person is having an emotional episode about the dead Soroshana. As is the Cess. All right. Um, this collar, Dean. Do I know if it's immediately doing anything to me no, yet? Like, it's, it doesn't okay. appear to be doing anything. It's you. You feel it like tightening on your neck, but it doesn't actually seem to have any effect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, important question. Can I move like this? I know flanking isn't a thing, but Jubilee also needs to hit this guy. Um, so. If you do an athletics check, you can just uh, leap by him. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to do the side movement, right? No, because he's currently blocking the entrance. Got it, got it. Got so it. You, can, you can do an athletics. Uh, you have uh, advantage right now. You're raging. You want also, to also, not to like metagame, but I can protect you if you're within five feet of me. So. Well, uh, yeah, for the protection thing, right? Yeah. But, yeah. You remember, there is no flanking rule in, in my. Yeah, 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 there isn't, but yeah. like, Jubilee, how are you gonna hit him? Yeah. With magic, I, got I guess. Cantrips. I got cantrips. I'm good. You sure. You're right. Yeah. Beat him all up. Right. And I guess the, Beat this him works up, better than. Alright, alright, cool. I'm gonna reckless attack. Okay, okay. Uh, so all these attacks are gonna. All two of these attacks are gonna advantage. I'm taking the. Uh, I'm dis. Uh, I'm disarm. I'm uh, unequipping the shield. Okay. Uh, brass knuckles, main hand attack. Uh, so it's, it's with advantage. Alright, so that's a <laughs> Alright, bonus action spikes. 
That's a miss. That's a miss. And yeah. advantage? Yeah, still That's miss. A miss. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm so uh, sorry. Yeah, you. That's all right. You're going full in on him, and he is just like he moves so gracefully to to dodge your attacks, and despite how heavily armored he is, and he's just pirouetting away as he readies his greatsword once more. It's kind of it's bizarre how he moves. Especially because you're not used to seeing somebody move like that from your own experience in the pits. Mm-hmm. You played armor, no less. Yeah. Um, anything else? That's my action and bonus action. I'm, I'm done for now, Chief. Okay. Uh, Jubilee. Alright, I'm doing the only thing I got left, uh, and that's my Ray of Frost. So I'm gonna aim it over Sess's shoulder and try to try to hit him. Okay. 22. That, uh, that does hit him. Six cold damage. Burr. That's a, that's Burr. A, that's a chilly bean. And it, it's a little chilly. <laughs> oh, and... A little bit of peso there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that is, that is it, but uh, you can assume I'm going to use my reactions to protect Cess. Okay. So. so his first attack will always be a disadvantage. Correct. Uh, with the Reckless, it'll be at neutral. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's All right. All according to Kaikaku. <laughs> yep, I, I get advantage. That's that. That's the important thing, because that'll make a difference. All My right. Um, so, yeah, as you blast him with the ice, it begins to, you know, parts of his armor uh, begin to freeze up and shatter on him. As Once the chunks of armor actually are broken off of him, you notice they immediately, like, corrode and rust, like centuries are hitting them at once. Um, and he, uh, in a a deep voice that has a bit of a musical resonance to it, uh, speaks in what can only be described as, like, really ancient common. Like, it'd be like somebody speaking, like, Shakespearean. Um, to, to, like, a person in the modern era. As, uh, he goes, Thy, thy blood will fall upon my sword. I shall cleave ye in twain! As he then raises one of his hands and just the chains lash out, and you see, ripping out of reality, a fey hound! That looks very distinctly like Sorashana, the uh, the Kalistar cleric that that died where you guys didn't see it. <laughs> As she materializes uh, behind, like behind you guys, as you see this like a uh, tendril of chain extend from him, and as his main action, he is going to try and attack Lasses. And so he is doing a normal attack first, and then a second attack with advantage. That's a nat 20, says. Oh, <laughs> yep, go for it. Oh no! Uh, do you have something you wish to do, young kitty? Uh, I don't have any reactions for this. I, I do have ra- I'm raging right yeah. now, though. Kitty 2, what about you? Uh, am I within... Am I, am I within 30 feet? You oh. are within 65 feet. No, uh... My so, spell doesn't work. It's 30. Oh, so close. All right. Um, so... Oh, wait, sorry. Wait, how, far, how far away are you from me? Then? No, way too far. Okay. Dang it. Never mind. No, can't do it. Okay. So that's uh, 11 damage. They will get half to the CX. Mm-hmm. As you get a first blade cleaving into you. Now the second one will be an advantage. Sixteen hits me. Yep. Okay. Or eight more, so four damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So as his main action, he is just sliding in past your defenses. The first hit just uh, almost gracefully will uh, go entirely past your guard and is going to slice right into the side of your head. And thankfully, you're very 
you, you recover a bit from this, so it's not the full force of it going into you, which would have probably left a, a hell of a mark on you. But uh, you definitely you felt that first hit, and then he immediately pulls it back faster than you could even pull back a punch to then uh, slash into uh, your, your hamstring as he is recoiling back and putting the sword at a high guard all within the matter of a second or two. And while he does that as his main action, as his bonus action, Sorashana is going to charging at Paige in her doggo form. And gonna try and bite you, Paige. Does a 23 hit you, Paige? <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. You take six piercing damage, and you can make a strength saving throw. Oh, yay! I'm so good at those. Uh, an 11. You're good. You didn't get knocked prone. Nice! As you see, this this fey hound has the same collar around its neck that you see formed around Cess, but more substantially. And uh, its fur is very much the kind of white silver uh, hair that Sorashana had, but it is tearing into your leg right now, trying to pull you down. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. Oh no. Cliff. Okay. Uh, we went over uh, this a little bit uh, after last game. Uh, I can't remember the exact ruling. I can throw something with my offhand as a bonus action, and then as my action, I can cast a spell. Is that right? Or is that still bad? I don't think... I... I don't think we actually talked about that. I, I... I, I could have sworn after the game you said that you were mistaken or something. No, I was mistaken if, by if, holding if, an action, not the... Uh, not dual wielding. Okay. All right, if you say no, then yeah, uh, don't yeah, worry Yeah, I'm going to say no uh, for now, just because I need to look that up. But yeah, if you're doing a cast a spell action, I'm going to say... I'm going to say you can't do a bonus action attack with offhand. I think you have right, to do an enough. attack action to do that, but... Uh, fair enough. Uh, I will move... Am I still, um... Super fast? Yeah, because you've, of the uh, you've made, exhausted or? the narrative purposes of you speeding up into this fight. Okay, good to know. Uh... In the weird, monstrous form that I now find myself in, I run in, dodge like around the wall, and come over here, and then over here on the opposite side of Page, of uh, this weird dog monster. Yep. Not quite sure how to react to that, but I do see uh, my other two friends heavily injured up ahead. Uh, and Cliff just goes ahead and he reaches into the shadows. Uh, as he looks at this strange new enemy in front of him and just goes, What is your fear? Uh, and I need him to make an intelligence saving throw. Okay. His advantage versus this. Well. Alright. I cast a phantasmal force on him. Okay. Uh, it's a very long blurb, um, but basically the summary of it is an illusion of his worst fear appears around him and he believes it real and whatever happens uh, around him uh, because of the illusion, he rationalizes it to still believe that the illusion is real. Uh, so like if, for example, if there was a bridge and he goes to try and cross it rather than thinking he just passed through it, he thinks, oh, I must have slipped or something like that. Um, but he takes 1d6 psychic damage, uh, hold on, now let me reread this, um, an affected target is so convinced of the phantasmal reality that it can even take damage from the illusion. A phantasmal, a phantasm created to appear as a creature can attack the target, similarly a phantasm created to appear as a fire, a pool of acid, or lava can burn the target each round on your turn, the phantasmal yeah, like you can deal, turn. yeah. Yep. So just like, I don't know what his worst fear is. I like the flavor it to be whatever his worst fear is, but if you don't think of anything, I'm going to say like, it's a bunch of the dru uh, Dryads and the Fey Wild still connected to their trees suddenly grow around him in the train, and he's now in a tunnel of thorns slowly starting to close upon him. 
Okay. He does not appreciate that as he <laughs> as his uh very uh very almond cat's eyes like become two sizes larger as he uh sees his his form actually begins to um decay. That is that is what he is afraid of is you see his armor beginning to he sees his armor beginning to corrode and rust. And um, his skin beginning to peel off and stuff. All right. No, this is only what he sees. We see none of it. Okay. Um, uh, but he takes five seconds. that. <laughs> oh, Jack can still know. <laughs> sure, Chad. Now you know what he's afraid of. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? Uh, I don't think I have a bonus action I can use. I can't throw a dagger because I haven't. I didn't do a main attack or anything. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. Okie dokie. Fun. Okay. And we come back to Paige. Paige Matage. There is a very angry priest dog in front of you trying to eat you. That's always fun. Okay. Gosh. Then I will go ahead and mm, let's see. Everything I have is distance, so. <laughs> but I can still hurl. I can still technically use chromatic orb. Okay, you're gonna throw it through your friends. No, no, no! I'm gonna attack the one in oh, front the of doggo? me. Oh, right. the doggo! Yeah, the doggo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can decide what Elvin is once you hit. Okay, yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. We'll we'll try to uh, roll it first. Oh, Ooh, nice. Okay, totally. you definitely okay. hit. What uh, what kind of element are you hitting this? this, this um, dog I was with? I was going to use a. Uh... Oh, where'd it go? Um, cold damage. Okay. How do you wish to kill Shor Sorashana again? <laughs> Um, so she's kind of starting to panic um, as it's like gnawing at her leg, um, but the familiarity in the face is there. So she's just kind of whisper under her breath that she's sorry and like throw her hands forward. And instead of fire this time, she decides to use ice um, just to kind of, as the orb goes inside, just kind of shatter out from the inside out. All right. Yeah, you see... Uh, her fur begins to, uh, first of all, roll your damage. Roll your damage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I should probably... I, I realized I was doing all of this before you actually rolled damage. She's very squishy, that's why. <laughs> I right. assumed the spell was going to do a lot of damage. So, yeah. Okay. Good enough. Um, so, yeah, you see her, uh, her fur begin to turn blue as there is panic in her eyes, her very human eyes right now. And uh, then as the orb begins to freeze over and her movements actually start shattering um, her, her legs and tail and everything until you see for the entire body just collapse into shards right in front of you. And you, you feel a, you, you hear the sound of a chain snapping and a little burst of light. The, the brave doggo oh, gave gosh. its life for its master. So sorry. Dies. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use the rest of my movement to get up there. <laughs> I have one of those cars on me. Oh, no. <laughs> It's okay, don't worry. He's too distracted by his skin melting off right now to do anything. <laughs> 40. Okay. Yep. I'm in a good spot. Okay. Alrighty. Dude, those out of action. Oh, those. Success. Alright. Uh, same verse as before. Uh, reckless attack, uh, main attack, and offhand. Okay. So, brass knuckles with advantage. That's a uh, mod 20 to hit. Okay. 
hit. Uh, that is eight points of bludgeoning damage with the rage, and okay. then, and then bonus action spikes. That is a twenty-four to hit. That hits. All right. There's another six points of piercing damage. You hate to see it. He is, you know, he is panicking. Uh, he is panicking. You and that has definitely lowered his guard versus you, Cess, because as he has had to move his sword to try and like hit whatever is this force around him, you're able to definitely get in there, uh, getting close under his guard and start stabbing into him and laying into those ribs. Jubilee. Same thing. I try to ray of frost him. Okay. 17? Uh, that will miss. Ah! As the, That's what I got, baby. Yeah, the magic begins to <laughs> just kind of dissipates against his fey aura. All right. Does he take the damage on his turn or your turn? Uh, I think it's on my turn. Okay. But if he wishes to see through the illusion, he can try to do an investigation check uh, for his turn uh, to see through it. He says, fuck that. I am here for blood. <laughs> gonna try and lay Cess low. He will not go out without a fight. Yeah, it takes his action to do it, so it would be a waste of turn. Yep. Uh, 18? Uh, 18 hits me, yes. Okay. For 8 slashing, after you're raging. Uh, okay. And then... Yikes, that's a lot of slash is another six after rage. So that's 14 total. Mm-hmm. All right. And we will summon another spectral, or another fey hound that is once more going to buy a leap at page. Another one. Yep. Oh, my God. You see the reality tears through again. It's just this one is a it's a generic one since nobody else of note <laughs> died. <laughs> um, so he will... Dogs can try and bite you. It's a 12 hit. Wait, if he turned those adventurers into dogs, are the regular dogs just like the passengers? You don't know. You don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, the consequences of our <laughs> actions. Oh, no. Yeah, that is my. That is my AC. Okay, three twelve hits you. Take six more piercing and make another strength save. Okay, ooh, let's go. Uh, five. Yep, you you drop. Not like dead, dead, but you're prone. As this hound appears to be much more aggressively minded towards you than Sora Shana was. Maybe some aspect of her humanity was stopping her from going all out, but this one just immediately grabs into your leg, the one that was previously injured, and just rips it out from under you. You fall to the ground, smacking your head against the against the wood. Oh, okay, I'm bloodied. Yep, as it starts putting its its uh, paws on you to try and get into your tasty throat next time. Hmm. <laughs> Whip. Oh, it's my turn again. Oh, geez, that was quick. Uh, first off, fan back. more Phantasmal Force. Yep. More Oop. damage. That was six points of uh, big, force damage. Big dick damage. Let's go. Uh, and I don't have my Shadow Blade anymore because I use Phantasmal Force, so... Only concentrate on one. <laughs> yep. Move up 30 feet. And... I'm going to Eldritch Blast. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, go ahead and send out a, uh, from the weird sinewy muscles that make up the, my new bow arm, uh, shoot off a dark arrow uh, right into this guy's face. Okay. Uh, that's a 16 to hit. That's not hit. Ah. Oh, I tried. Okay. That's my <laughs> turn. Anything else? Um, 
Can I do like a quick like medicine check or anything to see how everyone else is doing? Sure, if you want to gauge about everyone's else, everyone else's health. I mean, that, I mean, Latour can just ask too, right? Is that too much jobs? Or... Um, yeah, you could you could just ask them if you want. Like, please give more of a a gauge as to your state rather than a hit point amount. <laughs> Uh, on a scale of 45, I am at... <laughs> I'm feeling about a 5 right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, be fine. I have rage. That's basically, how energy. bloody are you? Wait, what? How, how bloody, bloody is everyone right now? I think everyone's under half. Extremely. <laughs> okay. Like, very, Jubilee, very Jubilee, by all outward appearances, like, this is her last stand. <laughs> I cannot wait to get healing, oh my god. Uh, we don't need healing, we just need consistent damage. Plus we we have need potions. to roll good numbers. Uh, we're fighting a high AC boss, it checks out. Yeah. Is there anything else you wish to do, Leetro? Uh, no. Uh, that, I only have a bonus action and I can't do anything. Okay. Unless I can throw a dagger as a bonus action, but Not I don't know if... Blast. Yeah, I didn't know if that counted as a... It's, yeah, Elder Blast is still casting a spell. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we come to Paige. You're on the ground with a hungry doggo on you. There is also a very bloody houndmaster across the room from you. Who is Gosh. Struggling. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna actually pull out my potion of greater healing, which is okay. what I chose to get at the very beginning of the game. <laughs> All right. Forty-four plus four. <gasps> okay. Fifteen. Ooh, yeah. All right. So nice. yeah, you uh, you slurp that down, good girl. Just like, like break the bottle on the side of the cart and just <laughs> chug that thing. <laughs> hey, why should I pay for that? I. <laughs> Do you see how torn up this fucking car is right now? It would also be much more slurpy and juicy coming from Cliff right now in this form of dread. <laughs> uh, if my family paid for that. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to do with your bonus action? Um, can I try to, or uh, no, I'm just prone. I'm not grabbing. Yeah, you can right? stand up for half your movement speed. Okay, I'll at least stand up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. How how are you looking, Cliff? By the way. Uh, monstrous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well. When uh, I... I have one HP and seven temp HP. That's eight Oof. HP. They're fine. Yeah, it's I'm fine. good. All right, I'll stay where I am then. Okay. So that's the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. All right. Sess, it's your turn. This guy is looking real messed up. Yeah, uh, reckless attack, same as always. Occam's razor, just to beat the <laughs> shit out of him. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. Yep. All right, yeah, let's play it. Armor bonus action spikes. That's a nine and eight. Nope. God damn, Sess, your rolls are terrible. I mean, it's an 18. Like, I gotta roll a 15 or higher to hit this I guy. know, it's just the nines and eights. Like, with advantage, it's just not been... Very I good, don't man. like fighting enemies with high AC. That's just a <laughs> further right, yeah. hammer on my luck. <laughs> He's taking it pretty well. Uh, Jubilee. Oh, oh boy. Um, mm, I'm nervous about that doggo in the back, but I know... If I leave Sess, something bad is probably gonna happen, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and hope Mark, it hits this time. Do what you think is best, homie. I'm gonna be fine. What's no! The with me? Listen, my job is to protect people, and right now you are in the most need of protection, so I'm gonna try once again, right across this guy. Okay. Ah! Okay. Oh, no. no. That's a 10. Yeah, he, uh,. He's able to resist that ray of frost, much like he was able to parry Seth's uh, blows. He is in his his last his last legs, but he is 
he's definitely being as tenacious as fucking possible right now. And he's gonna take his chance to try and finish off Cess. Alright, so first attack is normal. That hits. That is I'm down. slashing. Oh no! Uh, the X just means I'm down. It doesn't mean I'm dead. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're not dead. You're not dead. You're just want to make that clear to the yeah. audience. I'm not... <laughs> you're just down. So yeah, he, <laughs> he buries his blade in Cess's chest, and this one, it just, it's, you see it phase through Cess and appear on the other side, and with that, the, the color now becomes fully materialized around Cess's neck as she drops to the ground. And you begin to see some fur. Well, she's already furry, so you couldn't see any fur difference there. <laughs> um, but yeah, and he will then look at Jubilee and will step over Cess's body. And is gonna. Yeah, he's gonna bonk Jubilee. Welcome to try. 19? That is my AC! <laughs> oh no! Yeah. You had to say something. You have any Certainly cheating abilities? Not right now. I can. Oh. I. I can. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll okay. Do it. Are I'll you do cheating it. for her? Thirty. Yes, I'm cheating for her. Chrono magic. Chrono magic. No, not both of you can go down. <laughs> it's a reroll. Okay. So let's see what he gets on the second attack. Oh, I missed. All right. <laughs> You're able as he's swinging. You. Jubilee, you can't raise your shield fast enough for how quickly he moved past Cess. But you feel the slightest moment where just time seems to, like, trickle down very slowly, and you can actually take this chance to uh, be able to move away from his blade and use the shield to deflect any further momentum. And when time re... Nice. re resumes, he looks very surprised as he thrusts into dead air. <laughs> Two attacks though, right? Uh, he did his first attack on Cess. And oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, the dog is gonna attack you, Paige. Fifteen. Five more yeah. piercing damage, make a strength saving throw. Ah! My plus zero! <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! 16! Alright, you're still standing. It, you're pushed against basically the wall of this train as this uh, dog is just tearing into your legs, trying to pull you down again as you're manipulating the flow of time. <laughs> Alright. There's... Lip. I'm sorry, Paige, but my, priori my priorities are uh, towards the boss. Remember what Paige you... said, focus on the fucking mission. Wait, 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 very important question. Juby, Cliff, did you guys not buy potions when we got our starting gold? Nope. <laughs> nope. I fucking... Remember that time <laughs> I told you guys to everybody should have at least one potion on themselves if anybody drops? <laughs> I bought four of these damn things! It's <laughs> alright. Uh, right. well, first off, um... Psychic. Yeah, they take three more psychic damage. Okay, didn't like it. Did not like it. And I'm also going to hit them again uh, with another dark arrow because I'm edgy like that. Okay, Edge Lord. You Twenty one Edge Lord. <laughs> For three points of more force damage. Oh, oh, sweet summer child. Yeah, he uh. You notice his armor is rapidly shedding, and his skin is cracking in real life, uh, just like it is mine, as he is aging before your eyes, but he is still standing. Uh, I then step uh, behind uh, Jubilee and like put a hand on her shoulders, like, move out of the way. Right. Jubilee, you have a fleshy, thorny amalgamation of an appendage placed on your shoulder. <laughs> you have a friend. This is a friend. Actually, she will be here at the entrance, and she is gonna she is gonna try and shoot Paige's dog. <laughs> now that she is here, I'm gonna try and help. Okay. 
hits. All right, Paige. You see the dog in front of you has one of Sylvana's trademark, uh, s like, steel uh, darts fly out of her magnetic hands and impale it, and it dissipates into a, a cloud of butterflies and face smoke. Thank you. I'm trying to come as quickly as I can. Paige, it is your turn. Yeah, let's go. You are, All right. Doggos are dead. The, the hound master is barely standing. What get, do you do? Get fucked. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna use. <laughs> we're gonna use another chromatic orb. Ooh, big dick damage, baby. Let's go. This is second level now. <laughs> Just hopefully it right. does something. All right. Uh. Oh, dang it! That's a miss. I'm sorry. No! It's okay. It's okay. I can't wait for Paige to get heat metal and to validate all plate armor users. <laughs> That's all I want in life. I can't do anything else. I'm gonna move a little closer. Just a little bit. Okay, just, just a, a little, little closer. Blue, it's the tiny bit form the meat wall. Uh, what was the <laughs> elemental type you were gonna pick for your orb? Uh, I was gonna use acid. All right. Uh, you oh. see, part of the train behind, uh, behind the Houndmaster dissolves as it gets eaten away by a massive ball of acid jubilee. <laughs> Don't worry, throw that next time. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'll be careful. Sess, it is your turn. Oh, yeah, that's same. If I roll a nat 20... You're up. You, you can fuck. Uh, that's a success. <laughs> there we go. All right. So close. One success. So close. Um, so close. But yeah, so you are... You feel the uh, the collar begin to dematerialize around your neck as you are not quite dead. Jubilee, he is in melee with you. He looks like he's going to drop you if he is given the opportunity. That's all right. Like I said, this is my last stand. Cliff, I'm sorry, but I still got some fight left in me. I'm not just gonna step aside. And she's gonna cast Booming Blade. Okay. Um, with her flail. Yep. And try to hit him. And if this hits, even if he strikes me down, the spell is still up. And if he steps over my corpse, he's taking 1d8 thunder damage, so. I'd love to see it. Go! Yeah, let's fucking let's do it. Go. So now I just have to hope that it hits. 22. 22 hits? All right, that's nine bludgeoning damage okay. from my flail. And yeah, if he moves five feet, he's getting another D8 thunder damage. All right, you feel that time is slowing down for you, Jubilee. You can limit break. How do you want to kill this guy? <gasps> Full style points, baby. Oh, I... I'll just say that uh, the thunder damage kicks in then in that case, and you just hear this rumble eruption within him as the thunder energy just courses through him. All right, as he's going in for that final strike against you with his sword, you, the many heads of your flail collide with him, and you feel the percussive impact you basically start crumpling his armor shards, and then he detonates from the inside out as uh, Iker and Bones just splatter all throughout the uh, front of the train that you're on. And his sword tumbles out of his hands. And you notice the moment he drops, all of those bones instantly start to age as if they just went through centuries all at once. And all the blood then immediately uh, dissipates and there is just a pile of bones on top of Cess with a massive uh, greatsword lying on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna go over to Cess and see if they have a healing potion on them. <laughs> yeah! I, I just, it just looks like you're looting a fucking corpse, dude! <laughs> All right, so giant monster man starts looting Cess's corpse. And yes, uh, there is in fact uh, at least a potion, I presume, Cess, because you said you yeah, bought so many. I have three left. Uh, in the most monstrous way, I try and get the liquid into her mouth. All right, so you Ugh. just put a big fleshy claw over her face Ugh. 
I just forced the liquid down her throat. I do not like this. I had a collar and now this. What the fuck off? Your collar dissipates entirely. All of the fey bodies, uh, or I mean, all of the, the fey entities that might have still been around immediately disappear. Um, all of their weapons disappear except for this greatsword. And uh, Cess, you regain consciousness as a massive, gooey, spiked, monstrous appendage is over your mouth. I he's, fucking he's, slap he's, it he's, away. He's, 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 I know who it is. Uh, I pick up the great sword. Uh, very curious, and then I look at Jubilee. It appears you have a trophy. Yeah, I guess so. Um, that'll look just fine in the rec room. And just, like, coughing up blood. <laughs> <laughs> Paige is already over, like, <laughs> being mama cat over to, to Sess. We to won, right? Yeah, we, we won. That was a hell of a fight you put up. Looks over at Paige. You yeah. alright? I'm fine, but you... Are you okay? Uh, listen, listen, I may go down a round, but I'm gonna win the match. A little dizzy. Um, hey, um, DM. Yeah. Now that the um encounter has ended, are there any living passengers? Um, if you start looking around, uh, there is maybe a dozen people out of all the passengers wanna, on the train. You want to pluck our heartstrings out? You want to like say like how some little girl comes out cradling her father's corpse or something? No, there are no really? corpses. All of the bodies oh. of the slain have disappeared. Uh, is there blood piles everywhere? Or nope. is there no blood either? Everything oh, is yikes. evaporated. Anybody yikes. who died by the hands of the Fae, or was Fae, is just gone. And you got maybe a dozen people, like two children, um, a couple of men and women, and then Zyklos uh, appears out of a, uh, a rope trick that he had established to hide <laughs> during the whole encounter. I'm assuming, unless Cliff is just wanting to fuck with me even more yeah. that my former dread disappears yeah, after your former a minute. dread can disappear <laughs> okay uh hey since you're feeling so touchy monster boy hold on to these bones we'll need proof and she fucking tosses whatever bones were on her when she woke up towards yeah. cliff just lets them drop he's too busy kind of like just clutching his chest in pain because again one hit point <laughs> i man imagine that y'all need to work out a bit Oh says, God. takes one look around, looking at all the missing people, and looks back to her sister, back at Jubilee, and Cliff says, I, and then, like, just leans back and lies down on this, like, very dangerous part of the train and goes, I fucking hate adventuring. <laughs> She's gonna promptly try to drag her to the other side of the car. Um, Jubilee, okay, says, Jubilee. Where's, your, where's your spirit of adventure? You see, says, you see, says, look at you very straight just deadpan and then coughs up a fucking bloody hairball <laughs> oh, gross um. I guess that would explain why people were going missing on the train and why we couldn't find them anymore their bodies are completely gone are you okay Jubilee I've I've been better not gonna lie but still kicking Thanks to thanks to Sess. Thank you, by the way. We're a team, is what we do. Jubilee, as you uh, look at that greatsword that um, that Cliff has, when you walk by it, you uh, you 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 see, and Cliff feels the sword shrinks itself down to a long sword. That's odd. That's either very magical or very cursed. It is very obviously magical. You you can easily pick that up just by being in its presence. I can't imagine anything like this could be anything good. We should probably hang on to this, make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Shouldn't we just hand it into our dealers or contract people later then? I don't know. 
I'm Cliff, used to it's, dealing it's with. It's your family. Is are they the right people to hand this over to? There are many in my family who are great with magical properties and things like that. Cliff, this sword feels this... profoundly uncomfortable in your hands. But I think it is best if we learn more about this before doing anything. Bit of just an intuition, but considering the thing we got it from and the feelings I'm getting it from it now, I'm getting... Well, you know I'm quite well acquainted with dark spirits. I'm getting some of those vibes from this weapon right now. Well, I can certainly take the time to identify it, um, but we should Let's probably... get a head count first. We... Right. We should... Well, to be fair, some items, if they're powerful enough, can choose to hide some things if they wish when identified. Listen, Cliff, paint, nobody. I get the sword's really shiny, but maybe we should get everyone into one cot and figure out what we got left first. Says is like actively grabbing like an exposed side of her body where the like a rib or two are broken. <laughs> Ages right beside her, trying to hold her up. Yeah, yeah, leading on her. Um I'm gonna put the sword in my backpack for now. Okay. Ish. Once it is away from uh, Jubilee, it resumes its great sword size. <laughs> Noted. It is six feet long. <laughs> you might. If you don't want. I don't think any of us should really be in close proximity with anything magic, Rampage. Well, it looks like it's reacting very well to Jubilee. Jubilee, you don't feel weird with the sword, do you? Well, I mean, I don't think I could hold it and and see but I think that's what it wants because you killed its former master Are you, you acting wish... weird because of the sword now you already got two people in there do you want a sword in you too <laughs> you wish to hold on to it I won't stop you from doing so but like I said I am getting some bad vibes from it no offense, Cliff, but you've got enough bad vibes to handle by yourself, so I'll take this one for you. Perhaps you were right. Very well. I'll go ahead and take it. All right. As you hand it over to, to hand the sword over to Jubilee, first of all, Cliff, you feel infinitely better to not have that sword anywhere near you. Uh, it, you feel like Cliff did not like that sword. Um, Jubilee, when you hold the sword, it feels great. <laughs> um, it shrinks back down to being a long sword. Uh, and, you know, as you hold it, you know, it, it's clearly magical. Uh, you can immediately pick up what it does. It is a plus one long sword that also will heal you for 1d6 damage. Whenever you uh, whenever you damage something with it, oh, if you choose to actually use it, and it's not like an attunement slot, but you have to decide to attune to the blade. Noted. Um, and then when you stand near Cess, it further shape changes. <laughs> there we go. And it becomes a pair of very bizarre looking, like knives slash brass knuckles slash claws. Oh. It, uh, definitely seems to know how best we fight. And if you walk near Paige, it turns into a large staff with a very obvious, like, deer skull and antlers motif with chains hanging off of it. And uh, 
Yeah. So those are the, the three forms that it takes when it gets near the three of you. But when it's near Cliff, it, Cliff's body is very repulsed by it and it resumes its great sword shape. I've never seen that before. Yes. Um, when we finish, please allow me to, to look about it, look a little bit closer with it. I, yeah. I'd love to know its properties. Yeah, of course. Now, if we're done gawking at the shiny piece of metal, let's take who we can find and head to the front of the train. I think right. Agrippa and Talon might be there. Hey, yeah, yeah let's see. Running let's see who's left. Point. Paige is also going to look down the, the cart to see Silvana and kind of smile at her. She comes running up to you guys and sees how fucked up all of you are. Um, also, for a brief moment in chat, I'm going to show what heal in its longsword and greatsword forms look like. So that is the wonderful sword that was 3D rendered by, ver by our very own Cygnus. That is the Fey Greatsword um, heal. And you guys all know that it is named heal, like the command you give dogs. Um, and so it has a bunch of sylvan runes on it, and it's got this very particular motif. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Cygnus, for bringing my, my, my silly Fey sword to life. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Um, Sadly, got an ad as soon as you tried to show it on stream. Oof. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, and so Savannah is going to come up, and um, so I remember, like, so Jubilee has one hit point, and Cliff has one hit point. I have six. Okay. And yes. How, how many does Paige have? Twelve now. Okay, so she's going to focus then on Cliff and Jubilee first as she, uh, go, um, uh, my, my name's Silvana. Um, it, I'm, I'm, just let me, let me see your wounds for a moment. Oh, Silvana, thank you. That, that'd be much appreciated. Cliff, you heal eight. Jubilee, you heal ten. And then go into Cliff one more time. For another 11 into Cliff. As she burns all of her first level spell slots. Oh. As you see her, uh, she's got these like mecha gauntlet kind of things on. And there is a like a, a gauge on it that she uh, turns and they start crackling with uh, green and white energy as she puts them on you, and you immediately feel like a surge of electrical life force go into each of you. Oh. I appreciate it. My apologies, I saw you in the fight, but I was a bit distracted. Are you okay? You know, she is very pale, and she's very obviously been crying a lot, <laughs> in addition to Do you to need to cut? take a seat? Again, I think we should. Get I can. I can get you uh, something to drink or something if it helps. I believe the danger has passed at this point. Um, she'll look a bit dazed. Uh, uh, this is no nothing further. Is trying to kill you guys, and she will sit down. And as she sits down, Sir Talon and Agrippa come running in. Like. Are you are you all right? I'm just sitting down next to this um, lady whose name I don't know and just trying well, to comfort her. She just said her name was Savannah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I missed that part. But yeah, I sit next yeah. to a Fana, and I just I'm just trying to help her process, I guess. Yes, we're we're, we're doing fine. Thank you. Uh, are you okay? They they both look like they've been crying a lot in addition to getting rather brutalized um and they go we we saw what happened to Sorashana and before her before her body disappeared 
And I am. Where, where's Drakkar? He was cut down with a lady with twin swords. Um, you guys do notice he's, his is actually the only body that's still on this train because he got killed by an Ashbringer rather than the Fae. So he and his head are still there. <laughs> um, and Agrippa just... No, no, they... It, 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 there's nothing that could take down Drakkar. Like, that's, that's insane. So sorry. We tried uh, our best to uh, stop the woman, but she destroyed anything that was in her way. We're sorry. Where's he hiding? <laughs> you, you know, it, it's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> And can yeah, take right. you to the remains if you wish. You know that, that ain't nothing to joke about. You know that. And Sir Taylor is just gonna grab Agrippa and hold him close against him as Agrippa just breaks down and starts crying. I'm so sorry. He fought well, if it makes a difference. Killed many a foe before they could come upon us. Sir Palin just kind of very, very grim face, just kind of nods as uh, Agrippa cries against his chest as he's just holding Agrippa as he looks, and then he looks at you guys and goes, I am. Whatever, whatever you did, you, you stopped, you stopped this. Um, I'm sorry we couldn't do more. I think we could say the same thing. I'm really sorry. Um, you can at least take solace in knowing that. Events like this are unlikely to happen again in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job, job well done, I, I guess. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sit, I'll sit down, Agrippa, and uh, I'll help uh, gather the survivors. I'm, yeah. It's a grip into a uh, one of the one of the seats and takes off his uh his silver flame cloak and just wraps it around him. All right, if you if you could also, you know, if you could also show me where he is, I I would appreciate it. Of course. And, uh, yeah, uh, you can take him to Drakkar, and he will shed manly tears over Drakkar as he, uh, will just grab some, uh, like, table linens and other cloths that are in the cars, and just from the sleeper cars, he'll get some blankets, and he'll wrap Drakkar's body and head. Two of them gone. It's I I thought that this kind of thing would be over once the war ended. They they I've been with them for two years now. It's two of them gone. Gauze take a very long time to heal. But <sighs> As I said before, they fought uh, well, and I cannot account for one. I do know that this one killed many a foe before they could come upon us. 
possibly saving our lives. By doing so, continuing to save hundreds of lives in the future, if ever these attacks were to continue, if not for him. Yeah, he nods as he kneels next to the, the body, and um, he puts a he puts his silver flame holy symbol um, on on the body, and mutters a uh, something in celestial as he makes a gesture over it. I, I expect nothing less. Right. It, they really were wonderful, and I learned a lot from him. If only you knew who they who they were. I I appreciate that they could at least help help you all for however little you knew them. I I, I and he just kind of like sits down next to Jakar. He's kind of like he just lost his balance and he starts crying. Just pat him on the shoulder. Guys look out the windows in normal uh, gray wall wilderness and you see the great walls of the city for which it gets its name, are probably just a few minutes away. Anything you want to do in your last time aboard the train? Just sitting and reminiscing about the words she was spoken to and death in general, so not not really speaking too much. It's holding my chest in pain. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were done. Go ahead. No, continue, no, I'm please. done. No, okay. okay, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, holding uh, my chest still in pain. Wounds healed, but still hurting uh, for some reason. And reflecting back on the monster that Cliff had turned me into for a while, and Really not liking that. As well as looking upon my friends and seeing how injured they were before. Seth? Um, after getting all the passengers rounded up, are you sure that we have enough staff to keep the train running? Seth just goes to sit with Paige and the rest of the party and closes her eyes and just doesn't do anything until the train stops. Okay. Jubilee? I think Jubilee is actually going to find an empty car now. Uh -huh. um, assuming that's a possibility now. <laughs> well, there's lots of empty um, cars. There's only 12 yeah, people plus yeah. you guys. <laughs> yeah, so she's going to find an empty car and actually go through some training uh, regimens, just swinging her flail, her shield, just she's beating herself up that she couldn't have done more. Yeah, this train was probably, when you were patrolling it tonight, there was probably about 100 passengers on it, and now there are 12. The minutes really crawl by, and then you feel the train stop as you get back into the train station at Gray Wall Station around midnight. The doors slide open. She kind of nudges us a little bit, like, we're here, we should, we should probably leave. Yep, yep, I'm up. All right, come on, let's get his stuff and, uh, well, I'm assuming Cliff will explain everything to these people, I guess. I think so. You feeling better? 
<laughs> Physically, yeah, but... I don't know. It's... It's a weird thing to see... I mean, we, we're we used to death. We're, we're used to it. We should be. But it just hits a little bit different every time. Just don't ever get used to death. Promise me you won't. I won't. No. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna go make sure everyone else is ready. And she gets up, she punches one of the um, handlebars out of place and mutters two fucking strikes. Are you fucking kidding me? And just walks off. Um, as you guys are disembarking, uh, Sir Talon has that uh, the large form of the car wrapped up, um, slung over his shoulders, and he is holding that in place with one arm as his other arm is kind of gently corralling Agrippa wrapped in his cloak forward. And uh, the remaining 12 passengers get off the train, and they're all very dazed. Some of them go to the house, the rash guard um, house. Others kind of just me meander off into the night. And uh, Sylvan is just sitting in there in that seat, staring blankly forward, still on the train. Uh, Paige will actually walk past her as she's heading out and kind of stand next to her awkwardly for a moment. Um, I'm sorry I, I couldn't do anything about your father. I know he meant a lot to you. Yeah. She turns her head to look at you, but it's like she doesn't see you there. I came here to, to get him help, finally, to be able to get him help. He's gone. Why would then they do this to him? She'll kind of kneel down next to her and go ahead and put a hand on her hand, like, give it a small squeeze, like, I'm not sure why that happened, but I want to find the reason. I want to do my research, and I want to help you find some sort of closure. I know there's not much that we can do for him, but we can at least get some sort of revenge. I, I want to. I want to help you. Uh, you notice one of her hands digs into the seat that she's on. And the other, uh, they're both of them actually, with your hand resting on top, you feel her gauntlets tightening up. And she looks at you and goes, Revenge. I, I, I need to find out who, why they did this to him. I, I, I have nothing. It sold the last of what I had to get us here. How, how can I find them? Uh, I mean, you... You contributed as much to this as all of us. I... I mean, I'm not sure if I have to ask permission, but... I think... I think you should come with us. At least until you find your footing or where you want to be, but... I, th I think that would be the best decision. If you don't mind, of course. I mean, we'll, we'll certainly split the money, or, I mean, I'll split my money with you. Uh, like I said, you were a great help. Uh, and at least that'll give you a little bit of footing uh, to figure out what you want to do. The, uh, her eyes stop looking so glassy as she actually begins to focus in on you. She goes, really? You, you, 
You don't even know me. Well, I mean, we went to the same school, didn't we? I mean, we have a little bit in common, so at least I know a little bit about you, and I'd like to know more. It seems like she's trying to say something for a moment, and she is uh, she's just going to grab you and just squeeze you, and she just lets out dry sobs at this point. She has got nothing left. <laughs> kind of pull her into a, an, an embrace and not really say anything, but just try to gently pat her back. I, I don't know how I will repay you, but I will. When all of this is done, I will. Okay. I know what it means to to grieve. My my sister has helped me a lot with it, and I want to do the same for others too. I I want to use her strength that she's given me. You feel at this point you could probably corral her anywhere you want to take her. And she's gonna use that that Seth strength that <laughs> that minus one to try to pull her up. And to okay. try to escort her off the train. Yeah, she puts up no resistance. She goes with you. All right. Where do you all go now? Home. <laughs> Is that an option? I, I think we should... We can't just leave these passengers here. And, you know, we can't have Taylor report this by himself. We gotta... Listen, the, the uh, person in charge, the one who gave us that contract, they, are they here? Uh, you do see a, um, that dwarf with a, uh, some kind of, like, sleeping robe over some clothes comes, uh, shuffling as quickly as a dwarf can <laughs> out of, uh, out of the House Orion facilities with, uh, with a pair of attendants in tow. As he's putting his spectacles back into place as he comes towards you guys outside the train. So, uh, Pinky, you gonna talk to him or? I. You can take this one, Sus. That's like think? the looks at. Looks at the group like, is that a good decision? <laughs> I'll go with you. All right, and says, looks back at Paige carrying, well, her new friend, and gives a sort of like pained but understanding look, and then goes off with Jubilee. And I'm assuming Talon with Agrippa as well, or is yeah. Talon busy? Okay. Yeah, he will set down Drakkar's body with great care next to Agrippa, and he will come join you too. Dwarf looks up at you all. And I was informed that something had occurred on the train and that many of the passengers have gone missing. What 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 exactly happened? We were attacked by Faye. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. They uh They seem to be led by these uh two people. We uh we brought the bones of one of them and so has like a, a, a sack of bones as well as uh, the weapon. And then there was one more who, I don't know if there was with the, the, the Fae, but she definitely seemed to be enjoying a mass murder spree. The Fae? His eyes get very wide. How? Oh. By the host, of course! Oh. Of course? Yeah. Looks around and goes, When part of the reason why the track was so, was laid in this particular path is because the magical conduits were especially receptive here. This would indicate perhaps it was some connection, maybe, to a ley line of some sort that, that may have 
allowed for such confluence to occur. But, but I, for all these years, it's never happened. I, why now? Um, I mean, those people that were on the train, the one we killed and the other one that got away, maybe they instigated it. Maybe they saw the opportunity and took it. Listen, um, you can focus on the hows and whys of this right now, but we have a full report to give you. Uh, we have about 12 passengers left, um, a few corpses, but mostly just missing people. Um, is there anything you and your group will be doing now for these victims? Um, is Lord Jorian and Lord DeCivis all right? Should be. Yes, Cl Cliff is fine. He's just back there. Oh, thank the host. If anything happened to them, this could have been a disaster. It er um, already is a disaster. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The, the great loss of life, indeed. Um, I, I will see you that the, the survivors are attended to. Uh, I'll coordinate with uh, Chief Inspector Kronzahar and see what we can do. Um, I will also ensure that House Orion engineers are dispatched uh, immediately to to, to re-fortify all the arcane wards around these rocks to ensure that this, this ley line nonsense is, is no longer interfering with operations. Listen, when... I'm sorry, Obs, did you say he was going to do anything for the passengers? Uh, yeah, he said that he would see them attended to and he'd coordinate with Chief Inspector Kranzar. Got it, got it, never mind then. Okay, um, we've completed our contract. So, Talon, is there anything you feel the need to bring up at this point? No. Every, everything they said is correct. They, we stopped whatever it is for now, and... Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got. All right. Um, listen, our contract's up. Um, as much as I want to see that these victims are well taken care of, a, a job's a job. So if you could make with the uncontracting and the payment. Oh, indeed. Just come back tomorrow morning and I will, I will see you give it, delivered your full payment. Um, and he, he looks at the fact that it's only Sir Talon and a group bird. He goes, and I will ensure that the, uh, the, the death benefits are paid uh, to you uh, for your for your losses, and uh, the House Orion appreciates your services. You've done a great work to the house, and operations will resume with no risks in the future. What about the missing people? Well, are they just gone? Will your organization be making any efforts to find them? We will consult with House Thrash to see if there is any way of finding these missing figures, but I am no expert on the planes, but if the fair are involved in these disappearances, then they are for all extents and purposes gone from all relevant matters. I'm going to whisper to Juby. Listen, Juby, um, that sword thing, it was doing stuff to me and it did stuff to some of the other people that didn't leave a body do do you think it could help them i have a feeling this isn't a sword for helping all right i'll take your word for it uh, i can't say for certain i just figured that if that guy was you know hitting people with the sword and the bodies disappear maybe you could you know, backtrack the sword to where the bodies disappear to. I'm Quite not Quite sure. frankly, I feel better with it in my hands than this fellow, so. All right. Okay, so, um, anything else? No, I think that'll be it, boss man. Excellent. You will receive your payment in the morning, and you can be confident that this will no, this will no longer seriously inhibit the financial successes of this rail line. One question, I, and she like looks very like 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 I really didn't want to go here, but you finally pushed me past this line. 
when you said that people were missing, that wasn't was that public information for this transit? Of Did course not. The average not. passenger. Of course not. So. No one knew how dangerous this could have been. Well, neither did we. We didn't know the full extent of things or why people were disappearing until but you have you... received the information for us. Listen, when, when you hired us, I had figured that there was... that it wasn't something as crazy as them missing as in going to another plane. I thought maybe it was a kidnapping or something like that. But you, without any knowledge whatsoever, you sold those people those tickets to get on that train. And now the people that are left, what are you going to do about them? You're not going to make them sign one of those, like, no talkie agreements, yeah? Well, we, after an investigation, we will determine the appropriate response to it, but I, I'm confident that the matter will conclude uh, shortly. Good, and you and I can be in contact about that exact issue. If you wish to engaged on behalf of your house, Lady Ravamont, that is of your particular inclinations. Good. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow, then. So be it. I hope that you sleep well, knowing you've done a job well done. He turns around and just ends the conversation. <laughs> uh, I don't like that fellow. I don't like these houses we've been working for. I Let's go back home first. Uh, first off, Talon, are you going to need any help? We... No, no, I'll, um, I'll go, uh, I'll, I'll go see that priestess of the Silver Flame and we'll, we'll try and coordinate things from there. Listen, um, that lady of the silver flame. You're talking about Lady Ray, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You've you've uh, met her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've uh, helped her out a little bit here and there. Listen, um, if you guys need help, she knows where we live. So if you need to come see us for anything, just feel free to reach out. All right. Will do. I I appreciate it, Sess. I am, uh, this is going to be my last, is my last contract. I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> you take care, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you all too. You, I'm sure that, uh, you guys know that this line of work, that this line of work is, is what it is. As he kind of straightens up. Appreciate what you got while you have it. We do what we gotta do. May the flame guide your path and light your way. Thank you, Taylor. nods and goes back over to Agrippa and slings her car back over his shoulders and starts heading towards the chapel of the Silver Flame. Well, I guess we go home. Yeah, let's, um, so he looks back one last pan look at the uh, passengers as they're being probably being scurried off or scurried around by some uh, associates of House Dorian. Yep. Yeah, let's um, I'll grab Paige and uh, I think a friend's probably staying with us for at least the night. Uh, All right. I, I'm. Well, I mean, <laughs> we'll make room. Yeah. It's fine. She's probably close enough now where her ears kind of perk up at that, and she's like, "It is." Quite a, uh, Listen, a lot of people. I'll kick, I'll kick Maggie out of our room. It's fine. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Um, listen, your friend, what's, what's, uh, what's the name? Oh, uh, this is, uh, Silvana. Silvana? Silvana. Mm -hmm. Silvana. Silvana, you, you're staying with us for the night, right? She, uh, 
She looks at you, then looks back at Paige to kind of be confirmation. Yeah, yes, if if you'll if you will have me. You shot that thing that was a uh, nemesis, right? Yeah, yes, yes, I did. It was as much a part of this team as Talon and Agrippa were. So, uh, come on. Do you need any help with this stuff? Or... Right. Sort of. I don't really have anything. I got a light traveler. All right, let's head back then. You'll enjoy it. We have an excellent cook as a goblin. Cook as a... Is that supposed to mean anything? It was me trying to say we have an excellent goblin cook, but I, I came out weird because... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I couldn't tell if that was like the cliffside saying, "Oh, it's good." It's an excellent for a cook goblin. for a goblin. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. If I uh. And uh, yeah, if you guys don't do anything else, you can head back through the gates to the uh, the the main city of Greywall and uh, head back to your house. There are. Currently not any lights on. Uh, but oh. when, once you get inside, there will be, uh, you see the bright, reflective uh, red eyes of, uh, of Lily glowing from inside the house. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Sorry to be barging in so late. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't think you all would be coming back this late. I'll, 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 I'll turn out the lamps for you. Oh no, it's it's all right. It's all right. I think we're just gonna immediately uh, hit the sack. So don't 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 worry about it. You know. I think we need to have a talk as a group real quick. Oh, all right. Maybe just in the parlor then. Uh, of course, Lady Rabbit. I I will go uh, light the. Light the lamp now. She thank you scurries away and goes to get out some uh some some like matches and stuff and lights the couple of lamps in the uh the living room slash dining room. Much appreciated. Of course, Lord Dorian. Sees you all there, and she will uh, take this as probably this is not a Lily talk, and she will. Uh, okay, we'll go back into the basement. <laughs> um, Silvana, there's a um, a restroom if you want to freshen up before we uh, get in the stuff. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll just put some water on my face. Yeah, take take your time. We, uh, we're gonna need some. We're gonna need a bit of room. She will depart for the for the restroom for a few minutes, and she'll come back looking. Slightly wetter. <laughs> oh, uh, Sylvan, I'm sorry. I was trying to be polite. I we, we need a. I, I'd like a moment where the four of us could talk about uh, this contract thing. Oh, quick, oh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I I, no, I you, misunderstood. It's been a long night. Listen, hand on shoulder. Go down to the kitchen and just like eat something. All right. I know you're probably eating. Probably the last thing you want to do right now. But if you go to sleep, even more. If you're gonna go to sleep. Empty, it's it's not gonna be good, okay? Um all right. I is is it downstairs? Um it's and she just points the direction. I okay. think the kitchen's on this floor, yeah. The kitchen is on this floor. It's literally yeah, like yeah. adjacent to the living room and dining room. It's it's out of sight, so uh from the from where we are, I'm hoping. So uh I thought it was more like a like an open floor. It is plan. an open floor plan on this floor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is all an open right, y'all. Do you want to talk in the back? I just want. You could tell her to go into the basement if you want. I'm not no, sure. No, 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 no. Let's go to the house. Get in the basement. Savannah, Get in the Savannah, basement. If, if you're gonna be uh bunking with 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 us and Paige, uh the the bedroom is upstairs. It's it's the big one right at the top. Oh um, I I, I only need a couch or something, but no, no, no. I insist. Go get some rest. All right. Um... Thank you all for doing this. You're very welcome. And uh, she will uh, head upstairs. 
rapidly deflating as she does. Like she is just now beginning to have all the uh, latent adrenaline wear off and stuff. And she just looks like she's kind of shambling at this point. <laughs> but she goes upstairs. All right, so um, this is out of the way first. Tomorrow we're going to go see him, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do this quietly. What the fuck was any of that? Yeah, that was, that was a lot. I mean, the first, first time we had one of these gigs, understandable that we were at a downside. We, we didn't scout out the place. We walked in there, it was booby trapped to high hell. We were outnumbered. This time we were with people who were better than us. Two of them are dead. And the others are just quitting. Yeah, and not to mention that they knew that train was dangerous. And they still let everybody on it. I, I, I can't get into the moral conscience side of it right now. Because I don't want to work for another piece of shit house right now. I'm sorry. I, I've tried my best to be like polite and, and, and professional. But... If we gotta accept another fucking job, no, which... no, you're you're right. He was a pompous asshole. I just, it, it's not even just him, right? Because he's got his higher ups, he's got his coworkers, who all would have made the same fucking call to not have warned anybody. I just thought maybe those passengers got on with a deal or something. No, they paid full price for that shit show. It's not like we're any better. I just. Some yeah. little kid lost her parents. They're, they're just gone. Just how the city is, I suppose. The house how is, is ruled. Why are we doing jobs like that? With people who are better. When I saw Talon's group, right? I had entire faith. You know, we had a rocky little start. We're finally going to get a win. This did not feel like a win. If like, you didn't do that job, then. All of those people would have died. Maybe they could have found so and likely more the next run, and then Maybe again the next. They could have found someone better. Remember we talked about the first time we fucked up? They didn't know what they needed anyone better. You heard them before. They sent in the like, they guard. Felt the guard did not return. They sent in us. Uh, they if felt... we did not return, they likely would have sent in someone stronger. They felt comfortable enough. They've seen our reports, right? They've seen our dossiers. They they know what we've done, right? They looked at that fucking mess we did that first time fighting and said, we'll entrust 100 people to this group. I just... Listen. In... 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 In Swatterball, it's, it's three strikes. I, I feel like we're at two. I, I don't know. I just... It even feels like it's not even like a, a a strength, a talent thing. It just feels like stupid fucking luck. I just, I just listen here. Yeah, you you really want it? You... May feel like shit. It is shit. But this, despite how shit it feels, is still a win. We defeated the bad guy. The bad guy's not going to come back. The bad guy's not going to hurt any more people because we defeated him. And we will continue defeating bad guys because we are strong and we can do it. And we can only get better at it. Some chief, that's not the kind of tone I want to hear right now. So you better back down before you raise your voice again. I'm tired. Okay? I don't need you with more destructive talk. I get enough of that already. I listen. I I said we'd give this a trial thing based off of what happened last time. I'm just throwing it I out think, there that we have to pay attention to our progress. I think we're all a little worked up. 
you know, it's been a, it's been a rough day. I think we need to hold off on this conversation until we're all of a clear mind. I'm going out for some fresh air. Follow them out. Yeah, just no one's stopping. I'm going out. Ums. Okay. So Sess is going to step outside. What are what is the other three of you doing? Jubilee. Follow them out. Okay. So sorry. So uh, Cliff will Ju- follow out Sess. Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee is going to go kick Maggie out of bed and be like, "Get up. We're training right now." <laughs> All right. Uh, Paige, what are you doing? Paige is kind of sitting in the room awkwardly, By twiddling. Herself. Yeah, twiddling her thumbs, but uh, she's gonna stand up and go after Cliff because now she's feeling a little possessive over Sass and. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, Jubilee. Are you still retaining the sword on your person? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I'd still be keeping an eye on it. Okay. All right, um, so you- actually, can, I'm sorry. Um, oh. could I catch Cliff before he comes in contact with Sess again? Okay, so Sess will of- go outside because all of this. I'm just trying to get the rotation of what everyone's yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. So Sess is going to go outside. You see, Elitro immediately go to follow her. Jubilee is going to go storming upstairs, and so with all of this in- happening at once, you can take this opportunity to intersect or um intercept Cliff before uh, he gets outside. Yeah. She's gonna kind of rush over and uh, grab his arm. What is it, Paige? I... I... I I think you should let us have a breather. She's kind of angry and... I I know what you're saying means well, but besides all that, we did lose a lot of people today. Their their deaths still matter. And and I don't want you fighting with Sess. I wasn't going to fight with her. It Um, normally turns into that, though. I was actually going to ask her for help. I I think asking for help is good, but um maybe allowing her some time to calm down a little bit. Okay. You know your sister best. I do. Um and and that's why um, you, you should respect her feelings a little more, too. She, she's got a lot going on, too. Uh, we all do. And I don't want you to hurt her feelings. She's kind of poofed up a little bit. <laughs> You're They've right. been far too selfish lately. I need to start thinking of everyone else. We, we all rely on one, one another, and we want to help you, but you, you need to let us help you. And, and yeah. But we don't want to be confrontational, but I, I don't want you being mean to Sess. I don't want to be mean either. Paige. Will you help me stay up all night tonight? I don't want to go to sleep tonight. Um, oh. Sure, I I can help with that. Thank you. Perhaps we can do something fun. To help lighten the mood. I could try 
drawing some images from your books, some of your favorite scenes, perhaps. Oh, um, have you read them before? No, but you're always going on about them. I'm sure they're pretty well good. Okay, we can do that. And she'll kind of let go of his hand and kind of retreat back into herself. Gives her a, a little head pat and then goes into like the main living room, pulls out some papers and things. It's a fun head pat because she's six inches taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Jubilee, as you stomp upstairs, you, uh, you hear, who, who the hell are you? What are you doing in my room? <laughs> I, 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 I'm so Ski. sorry. They, they, they said I should come up here. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Jubilee, Jubilee, who the fuck is this lady? That's a friend. She's staying with us. By the way, you're getting up anyway. We're doing some morning training. Let's go. Wait, wait bold people? Lace up your boots. Let's go. Uh, I am just... not in the mood. I am not in the mood, Magnolia. Ah, uh, uh, Jubilee, I put it on. You Thank better stop you. fucking with my bed, miss. She can uh, if she wants to. Now get your ass outside. I, 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 I won't do anything. I'm sorry. I just, I just want to. Just... Sylvana, <laughs> Sylvana, never you mind her. She's a piece of work. Go to sleep. <laughs> just wait for the moment until uh, she learns that that's not her bed anymore. <laughs> Magnolia will lace up and throw on some uh, pants and like a tunic and stuff and Kind of be lacing it up as she's going downstairs. I don't see why we're doing this so late now. I can't wait till the morning. Um, and with that, we'll go to Sess. You go outside. The air is fresh. Um, it's very different than Sharn. You know, you've gotten a little used to it the last uh the last couple weeks you've been here but the air is much clearer there isn't that kind of constant claustrophobic smoke and press of humanity and the odor of all kinds of arcane spells going off at all the moments it, it just smells like you're you're in a town full of people that has very open air and is very underdeveloped what do you do has the time passed that a would a short rest have passed at this point? Would a what have passed? Way, Sorry. A short rest. Um it's it's been like 30 I I all right, with you guys lingering outside the train, sure. We'll say we have roughly a short rest worth of worth of time. <laughs> Just wanna know if I could roll hit back because sure, I, I don't know if you that's not, happening. Nobody's gonna fight like... you, but you can heal if you want. <laughs> uh 12, 20. Hey, that's that's a Roundabout of HP. Says doesn't just stop outside and DM if this goes on for too long, feel free to like slap me at any point. Yep. Uh, I'm going to a bar. Okay. And uh, Says has probably seen a few taverns on. She is just going to buy a bottle of her coach's favorite brand of dwarven firewater. Okay. Just it's takes uh, it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I would say it's it's rarer here than it would be back in Shard, um, just because there's not as many dwarf interactions, but you can find one. Uh, how much is it for just a whole ass bottle? Uh, we'll, we'll say two gold. <laughs> two gold, here you go. Here you go, two gold for a bottle. Put it in a paper bag for me. I'm going to commit crime. Okay. Uh, it says takes that bottle and uncorks it and just starts drinking and walking through the shadier parts of Grey Wall. Mm -hmm. uh dm we don't have to look for combat but okay. says is actively looking for thugs <laughs> or criminals to beat the shit out of to vent steam okay odd or even says uh odd even um oh, shit. now second odd or even uh odd even yeah! <laughs> all right <laughs> so um <laughs> you uh you did not find any any criminals or near duels. Uh you as you became increasingly inebriated, you uh 
you definitely picked a fight with just some some rough types who just weren't doing anything particularly wrong, but you were in a fighting mood. Uh, and of course, you you eventually kick their ass because you're you're sets. But oh, these guys All right. were some bigger dudes, and they do they do basically take you to half health um, before you subdue them all. Oh, I, it just it just happens. There's, yeah, there's, this is no I'm not going to do a whole combat uh, scene. So. Oh, oh, I mean, not a whole combat scene, but I thought I could get some RP in. But uh, yeah, you yeah, can do sure, RP but... if you want. I'll just tell you how it pans out. Oh. <laughs> so there will uh, be. Uh, uh, I'll just, say you get a, a squad of uh, squad of bugbears who uh, that you are being particularly confrontational to. Says is um, just full on shifted and raged, and she doesn't pay attention to what she's doing every time she's rage she's like given in to this one sense of fear and is fully flared up now that she's inebriated and i'm not gonna bore you all the, the the details as it happens as she walks away if any passerby or guard comes by there are several knocked out bugbears their faces smashed in broken uh fences and other like window bars about um like they're trying to crawl away ones is just smashed through a crate so it's just sort of like stumbles away from that so to walk around to parts of town that she's been like the meat place she just stares at the window she walks over to lady ray's church and just sort of like approaches the door and then before uh knocking on it she just like full face plant puts her face against the window to look inside <laughs> Um, goes over cryotrixia's instantly gets the feeling of a happy family, so she walks away <laughs> from it. And as she's walking back, she finishes the last glug of fire water and then chucks the bottle just any direction yep. high. Walks back to the home. It's now like 2 3 a.m. I'm assuming the party yep. would have gone to sleep by this point. She starts looking through the window and then she opens it from the outside with the she's familiar enough with it he's yeah. a crime uh and sort of just like chucks herself in closes the door behind her with her foot crawls to the couch and just sleeps okay uh are me and Paige still in the living room <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, so it's like, like 3 a.m so uh, you guys would still be awake i guess because you're trying yeah to we were trying tonight. to stay up all night yeah so. oh well i mean if she saw them through the window in the thing she is going to instead Fall asleep on a bush in the backyard. Okay, you fall asleep on when, a, the when, back patio. When, when uh, Cliff says all night, uh, Paige is not a, <laughs> a a nighttime person, so it is basically her like halfway dozing off, like flinching to like get back awake, trying to say something, and then slowly drifting off again. Uh, Cliff is just. Uh, rambling on as if uh, this is a full-on conversation and every little mumble is a full-on response uh, to where the <laughs> coffee and I'm like oh yes coffee is quite an excellent drink uh, I think with enough time you could actually brew some with superior taste uh, more than any other uh, you know on and on and on and on uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> eventually Paige will fall asleep <laughs> too do you continue staying up, uh, Cliff? Uh, yes. Okay. And I will take a point of exhaustion okay. for that. Fine. Jubilee! Before Cess returns to the home several hours later, you could be out back with Magnolia. <laughs> yep, just kind of similarly, she's in a similar mood to Cess, except instead of beating up random people, okay. she's beating up her sister. <laughs> It's it's the thought that counts. What the hell, Judy? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Listen, I had a really hard day. I just need to let off some steam. All right, I just I am pull pull your hits a little bit. I'm not the enemy. I know, was. Maggie. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. I, this job didn't go too good and 
I got knocked out of the fight before it was ended, and what good am I if I can't protect people? That's our job. That's our damn job. And I was the first to go down. It's not happening again. It's just not. Magnolia kind of lowers her practice sword and stuff and walks up to you. Goes, Juby, you know what daddy always says. You know, if you going down, that means you were doing your job. You were taking those hits so somebody else didn't. Did you get back yeah, up I... again? I did, but not on my own. I just can't let it happen again. Magnolia will. Um, put her, put her, uh, uh, her hand on your arm for a moment and be like, well, I guess, you know, this ain't a job right now. You ain't alone. No matter what happens, you always got family. I know. And I missed all of you. Even you, Maggie. Oh, well, I guess I should be honored. <laughs> she kind of <laughs> chuckles a bit. <laughs> no, sis, you, you start slacking again. Well, I guess then I'm going to be out here recruit my own little group of friends to go off and 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 do the family proud so you know i guess if you just want to see your sister take all your glory <laughs> uh-huh yeah that ain't gonna happen anytime soon <laughs> well I, I guess i can do a little practice tonight then you know if anything you'll I'll go get weaker <laughs> uh-huh i'll go easy on you this time <laughs> and uh she will she'll she'll continue sparring with you and stuff until until you're done it'll be it'll probably be for a little bit yeah um definitely i don't think late enough to see yeah Cess drunk and Cess stumble stumble back in <laughs> um but yeah gotcha yeah eventually you you finish up and uh head back in and you see uh you see uh Paige half asleep as cliff is just rambling incoherently to himself uh, as he's drawing pictures uh, cliff you mind if i bar sleeping beauty over here oh i uh, i suppose not uh are you Hi. up to anything tonight do you need um uh a talking companion tonight perhaps oh well i mean i just Beat up my sister a little bit, so... Hey, your sister did tired, good, but... too! <laughs> Go to bed! I will. Just stop, stop talking to the boy, you know? I'm just sitting here. I was sleeping before y'all came in. <laughs> I can help patch up any wounds you may have had. Uh, I, I, I think there are some bandages in the cabinet. I can help wrap them up. I mean, you don't have to, but sure, that that'll be fine. I'm gonna real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna put Paige to bed, and I'm just gonna scoop up Paige and bring her upstairs. Okay, you put her put her in her little bed. Sess is still not home. You can see. Mildly worried. <laughs> um, but go back downstairs and rub my eyes, slap my cheeks a little bit, and wake myself up and. 
hang out with Cliff for a little bit. Yeah, Magnolia will head up and go shower and head to bed. Get some bandages out and start wrapping up any like small cuts that may have gotten or uh, put some ointment on uh, some big welts they may have gotten from trading blows. You really go all out with your sister, don't you? Yeah, well, if I don't, who's gonna? Someone's got to put her in her place. <laughs> uh, I wish I had a spine like yours. <laughs> well, Daddy was always a little soft on her. He likes her. He likes her best, so. I don't know why. I guess because she's, she's cute and always has been. Those big doe eyes can get her anything. <laughs> But you, you can do, you can get whatever you need yourself. Well, I, I try anyway. And that's amazing, isn't it? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I never really thought about it before. It's the fact that I you just... can go out and do anything with nothing more than your own strength and grit. I find that pretty amazing considering most of the big wigs and those large houses need to hire people like us to do it for them. You, you make your own path. You don't have someone else do it for you. Well, that's not entirely true now, is it? I mean, I, I didn't choose this job, but I'm damn good at it, so. And, I mean, I follow orders. That's what I do best. I feel like I've been doing that for too long. Don't you ever just want to break free? To say no? Do whatever the hell you want for a night? No repercussions. I thought about it. <clears throat> um, before I took this job with all of you. Thought about putting my foot down and saying my piece because I like the job I had before. What was that? Well, working for House Lorander. It's, I liked it. But, uh, I guess they had other plans for me, so. Your family? They did not like you working there? Uh, no, it, 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 it wasn't that. It's, it's a good, it's a high honor to, you know, be working with, you know, a mocked house and everything, but. I don't know. I guess. I guess I wasn't doing my job right or something because one day I just pulled out. And they said I needed to do something else for a while. Maybe they just hoped you to get some more experience before coming back. Yeah, maybe. I don't know uh, why they may have sent you away, but I know for damn sure it wasn't because you were lacking in any way. You're possibly one of the most magnificent people I've seen, especially in a fight. Uh, well... <clears throat> That's kind of you to say, but 
after how today went, I don't quite feel that's the same way. <laughs> Well, maybe, well, then maybe, as Paige was saying before, before you uh, came up here, we need to take care of each other more. Perhaps, whereas you are the sword, perhaps some of us can be the support that helps you from being parried away. Yeah, I think all of us, all of us are still learning that we're not in this alone. You know what? I've had enough gloom and doom tonight. How about you and I? We say fudge it and we go out. We do whatever the hell we want. Tonight, oh, right, right now? Right now. Yes, right now. Why not? What are gonna do now? It's it's three. We will morning. find something. It is, it is the city. There is nightlife. We can do whatever we want. We will go out to the town, find something to do. Whatever the, whatever our whimsy say we should do. Just you and I go out and we have fun. Do not worry about the rules. Do not worry about anything. No restrictions and nothing. What do you say? All right. All right. Why the hell not? Let's let's go. Let's go before yes. I change my mind. <laughs> all right. I take her by the hand and I rush out of the house with her. All right. So um, you guys rush out the front of the house. Um, what? What do you want to do tonight? Uh, you're leaving uh, probably a few minutes after Cess has already fallen asleep in the back patio. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> do we see her? <laughs> no, because you're leaving through the front door. Okay. <laughs> so you head out in the town. It's 3 a.m. There's, uh, there's a good share of nocturnal monstrous types that are still up and about doing things. Let's go party with some monsters. Hell yeah, let's go. We go to the monster clubs. Monster clubs. Yeah. Well, there aren't really clubs here. They're not that advanced. If you were in Charm, you could go to a club, but uh, yeah, it's mostly just like some taverns and stuff. That'll be fine too. We're gonna go party. We're gonna get drunk and we're gonna party. Yep. Um do you have the sword still on you when you go out or you leave that at home? No, I think she would leave that at home. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you guys could uh, head out and party hardy. Is there anything you want to do besides drink and be up to tomfoolery? Oh. Uh, no. I feel... <laughs> I feel like after being a little inebriated, um, Jubilee would, uh, like... She's still like in a fight and mood, but not like to fight fight, yeah. like but she'd probably do like some like drunk arm wrestling with like some rough okay. patrons. <laughs> okay. Uh Otter even Jubilee. Uh Literal uh or my fuck, I'm mixing Cliff. up my own names now. Uh <laughs> Cliff would definitely like start egging people on and like get people to start like betting on as well. Uh and try and get the majority of the gold onto like Jubilee's side. Yep. Jubilee, odd or even? Oh no, um, odd. Even. All right. No. <laughs> no it has to be even. odd. One of these it's times. It's literally right? I rolled a four three times in a row. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do another one just to just see what happens. Okay, that one was odd. So it's it's. it's but now odd. we're not gonna get it. It's gonna go back to even yeah. next time we get. So it. yeah, you uh, you do your fair share of of drunken arm wrestling matches and many people are not prepared for that the silly the silly fluffy pink tiefling to be as strong as she is so you're able to clown a few folk but eventually uh like this big big um goliath finally is able to to take you down 
Before he does that, and I see that she's losing, can I do some, like, illusionary trickery to, like, trip him up so that she wins instead? Okay. Odd or even cliff. Uh, odd. Odd. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> just, when, uh, just when it's uh, looking like he's about to win, he sees a spider crawling on his head, and he freaks out because he happened to be very arachnophobic. And... <laughs> Jubilee is able to exploit this and just pins him down. Yeah. And the whole crowd cheers and stuff. And he looks around for the spider and stuff. And uh, your winnings pay for all of your drinks tonight. <laughs> Woo! As I go and buy myself another uh, another round with me and Jubilee, uh, I just as I'm passing the guy, it's like, oh, I think I see it on your back. <laughs> oh, no, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you guys have a, a good old time um, as you you drink and, and engage in tomfoolery. Um, and you guys go head home after a while, probably when the sun's beginning to come up in a few hours. <laughs> yep. Just come home, give Cliff a little pat on the back and just say, thank you. That was that was fun. That was fun. I'm going to go crash now. Good night. Or good morning. Or whatever the fuck time it is. And just walk into the house. <laughs> I'll see if I can make some uh, breakfast for everyone else waking up. All right. Yeah, you can uh, start cooking. And a little little Lily will come up um, and see you cooking up. Oh, Lord Dario, you don't have to cook. I, I, I can take over that. Oh, I'm sure you can, but tell me. Have you ever tried butter on a Pop-Tart? It is so freaking good. What's a Pop-Tart? It's like a very cheaply made pastry. Oh, I've never heard of that before. Is that what they eat where you come from? Yes, they use magic to cook it. Tends the name Pop Tart because the magic they use makes it pop out of a tiny little magical contraption. Wow, that seems really unnecessary. <laughs> it is. Only the rich have it. Oh, well, I'm I'm sorry that something so cheap would only be used by people so rich. But I guess the kingdoms are really an unjust place at their core. <laughs> well, yeah. Now try this butter and a Pop Tart. <laughs> she goes. Oh, that's very tasty. You can taste how processed the magic is. Exactly. Now help me cook some real food. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to, how to crack some eggs and make some bacon. Do you put the whole shell in as well? No, no of course not. All right, all right. I need to get my stool. She goes over and... You know, scampers her little legs over and picks up a little stool so she can stand up to the counter. And uh, she goes, you take the egg, you crack it against the, the rim of the bowl, and then you pull it apart like this. And see, it just goes bloop into the bowl. And, uh, then we start know. doing a little, a little whisking. Whisk, 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 whisk. <laughs> oh, we're doing scrambled. Fantastic. <laughs> I find it to be the most approachable for everyone. Until you learn their particular preferences. Uh, with my skill level, I think I will be best doing... Uh, pouring the orange juice. I'll be doing that while everyone else wakes up. Excellent. Are, are you sure you don't want to sleep, Lord Dorian? You look pretty sleepy. I am most positively sure I do not want to sleep right now. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, with that, you guys can prepare breakfast. Um, presumably, the first people awake will be uh, Jubilee's servants, who will assist you guys with more uh, preparation for everything, getting out more chairs and stuff they've accumulated over the last two weeks of you working on this job, um, followed by uh, um, who wants to be... Paige, do you wish to be the next awake? <laughs> She will probably be next awake and kind of, 
I don't think many people are in the room. It's like oh, uh, it your bedroom is literally just you. Uh oh. Okay. Jubilee uh, is upstairs. No, I think I think Jubilee would be there to like pass the fuck out. Like she just made it to oh, the yeah, bed. Oh yeah, you guys and consolidated like, your room. And, she, and she's like yeah. hanging off the corner. Okay, yeah. So Silvada, uh, kind of laying very awkwardly on the bed because she's like I I don't know where to be right now. Uh, Magnolia like flopped next to Jubilee and then you waking up somewhat near Silvada but she's very much trying to take up as little space as possible on this bed she's going to uh, take a blanket and kind of put it over her just to try to get her as much sleep as possible but definitely notices the, the absence of somebody in the room <laughs> so going to try to go downstairs because She's usually up before Sess, so yeah. uh, definitely going to go downstairs to take a peek and see if she's down there. She is not down there. There is the servants and Cliff making breakfast. Good morning. Very good. Oh, good, good morning. Um, have you seen my sister around? Um, no. Um, she may have come back after me and Jubilee left, though. Huh. Um wasn't in the room uh, well okay thank you she's gonna kind of spend a little bit to try to look around the house for a second check the basement and yeah she's not in the basement um <gasps> as you wander around you look out a window at one point with the sunrise and you see Sess just flopped on your porch in a bush <laughs> she's gonna immediately run out she reeks of sweat, blood, and alcohol. Sess? Sess? She's gonna go and shake her. Uh, Sess, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just went for a little walk. Took a you... little nap. <laughs> she cost him a few leaves. You smell awful. Uh, it was a late night workout, I guess. Let me go wash up. Thanks for waking me up, sis. Pats her on the shoulder and just turns back to the house and walks inside. What? She's gonna run after her like, wait! Uh? Did you sleep outside? Yeah. What? Why Why didn't you come in? Why Why were you out so late? Uh, Bush looked comfy. Mm, sis. Yes. She's gonna grab her hand and walk her towards the bathroom. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was going there anyways, but. You you worried me. What what do you think you were doing? Oh, I just uh, I went for a breather. You know, clear my high, clear my mind. I guess. You're. Those are blood stains. Uh. You know, if you, you know, last you check, sis, we were pretty bloody after yesterday. Says taking off her jacket and tossing to the side to wash later. So it's like rubbing water on her face. Shami. I'm sorry, repeat that. Yulia didn't hear it. <laughs> She's going to say Shami. And kind of look intently at her. Her ears, like a me if I can look at her and say, I sure you want to go around saying uh, I, I, you sure want to go around saying names like that right now? I feel like we're away enough. I, you know the rule, sis. No saying names like that. I like so you know, so with true family, all right? And I, I like these guys, but I, I get the feeling you wouldn't feel too comfortable if Lily overheard the word Kamar, or me refer to you as that, yeah? But I'm just letting you know that I'm upset. I know. I'm sorry. I just, uh, did a really long walk, and I was just really tired. I came inside and crashed, but, I mean, I got into the property and crashed not inside the house. I, I don't mean to worry you. Okay. I'm not trying to hold you back anything. No, of course not. You, you never do. But 
I know we've been going through a lot, but you can rely on me too. And I do. Don't worry. I mean, hell, I I don't think I I don't think before this adventure and lifestyle I would have looked away from you in the middle of all that mess yesterday. But I was able to. I'm counting on you. I know you. Listen, and she like grabs off her shoulders and looks at her and says, "I, I know how strong you are. All right, I wish you knew how strong you were, but you are plenty strong. I am not worried about you. Okay. But I mean, I'm I, I am. About but you. And I went out for a walk. It's fine. Maybe I bumped into a, a crate or something on the way back, but you know, I'm fine. It was late. I'm tired. A little woozy from the, you know." Being knocked around like that. Knocked around? You, you know, back on the train, right? When I was, you know, big sword does a whole lot more than just cutting, you know? It, it sent my body flying. Anyways. Deception. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't actually me trying to be deceiving, but we're, we're going to roll with it. This is good. <laughs> That's a nat one. <laughs> I hate this. I, Good, because it's because mine was a four. Yep. So I you uh, you know that she's bullshitting you. Gonna grab her by the face. Stare at her. <laughs> I know emotions are high, but please don't scare me like that. Listen, I'm I'm here. I'm fine. I. You might not like what I gotta do sometimes, but I am. Um, you might not understand it, but I need to do it. I, I, I have to do it. I just looks back down and says, "I'm not gonna get myself killed without you looking." All right. I didn't do it in the pits. I'm not gonna do it on a leisurely stole out in the middle of the night. Okay. Okay. Just. I gotta deal with how I can. She'll kind of let go and take a cloth and start wiping her face off. My face or yours? Yours. Thank you. I was like, I get the uh, disgusting stench out of my clothes real quick. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm not trying to worry you, Paige. I just... No. It's just been a bit. It's been a lot. It has. It has. And it's okay. But I guess I'm just... I'm being too worried. It's just... I mean, a lot of, a lot's been going on. It's, you know, you already were during that battle, the one before. I'm just, just being overcautious, I suppose. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You're supposed to worry. It's okay. It happens. He says, like rubbing your hand on her cheek. Now, he says, "It's. I know you're gonna get worried. You got worried from before. You're of course gonna get worried when we're fighting on trains instead of you know a sporting arena." Don't apologize for it, okay? You did nothing wrong. Thanks for checking up on me, big sis. <laughs> yeah, don't forget it. She'll <laughs> rub her cheek again <laughs> with the watch <laughs> cloth. So cute. Head on back then. I'll see you for breakfast. I just gotta wipe, wipe off the uh, old blood. <laughs> okay, I'll meet you downstairs. She'll go ahead and leave. Okay. Um, Magnolia will head downstairs before Jubilee, since Jubilee was out late getting drunk. <laughs> um, and... Good morning. Oh, Cliff, always so good to see you. What, what'd you do with my sister last night? She was, well, she was quite an appearance when she came home. Oh, you know, went out to have some fun was all. Right, well, I, I hope the next time you think to invite your favorite Ravamon. I did. She, uh, 
she uh, had her eye. She was doing her best, like big, big uh, doe eyes thing, and her eyes immediately narrow. Oh. <laughs> Besides, you went ahead and went to sleep, remember? I'm okay. gonna go take a shower. I, I'll have some food after. Oh, but you just showered last night. Oh, all right. I put the orange juice. He will just stop away. <laughs> Jubilee, you're woken by the door slamming in your room. <laughs> what? Oh, God. Oh. What time is it? It's is morning, my hair okay? Jubie. Is my hair okay? Nah, you look fucking terrible, Jubie. Oh, I hope Cliff enjoys so. it. What? And she will slam the door to the bathroom when she goes to shower. And wait, wait, I, I, wait, I need to go in. Okay. All right. Silvana's like, wakes up with all this shouting and door slamming and she's like, like I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for intruding. I'll, 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 oh, I'll grab no, my things together. No, I'll, I'll head out. No, you. I'm sorry for the rude awakening. You, you take your time. It's, it's all right. Um, it, is, is everything all right? Yeah, I just had a had a long night. That, that's all. I'm, I probably look a, a fright right now. Um. No, no, you look, you look uh, beautiful. Um, That's all right. You, you don't got to lie to me. I, I, my makeup's probably all over. Uh, um, I, I, well, I, I'm awake now, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave this room to you and to your sister, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll head downstairs. All right. I'm sure, I'm sure Lily can, can get you something to, to eat before you go. Yes, of, of, of course. What, you, yes. And she will kind of like really awkwardly like try to scrabble together her various belongings. She grabs her her uh, her like tunic and jacket and stuff and starts like buttoning it up quickly and lacing up her boots quickly. And um, she's like hopping a bit as she's uh, leaving the room <laughs> to go downstairs. Is Magnolia in, in the bathroom? Yes. I kicked down the door. <laughs> God. What do you want, Juby? What else do you possibly have to do to me this morning? Look at the state of my face. I need to wash up. Uh, you should go get your boyfriend to wash it up for you. I don't have a boyfriend, Magnolia. That's not what so Cliff says. Out. Cliff. I did not say anything. Excuse you. All right, I'll go deal with him in just a second. She's going to wipe her, wash her face real quick. Yeah, Magnolia is like, you know, in the shower and like throwing water at you. <laughs> Silvana comes downstairs looking quite bedraggled and tired and, uh, and dirty and confused. <laughs> oh, poor As are poor we all. Thing. <laughs> Oh, there's more of you, okay? Well, oh, you want to stay for breakfast? We got another chair. Nesca, go bring us another chair. The half-orc looks down at her and looks over at uh, everyone else. And just... I'll get it, don't worry. Cliff goes ahead and goes to get the extra chair. Okay. I... I I can just be leaving. It's not it's not a big issue. Oh, no, please don't do that. Uh, please, you're a guest. Uh, stay and eat with us. All right, Paige. Um, it, is this all normal? And there are so many of you. It's becoming the norm. Look, rent is expensive, and we have to uh, uh, distribute a lot in order to afford this place. <laughs> um, eventually, Jubilee and Magnolia can come down all clean and shiny. And with that, we will we will end for tonight with everybody sitting down for breakfast after their mission. Um, 
everybody, you also level up to level yeah, four. Yeah. You'll love to see it. Congratulations yeah. for, for defeating the Houndmaster and for just defeating your second quest, Riders on the Storm. Uh, roll my duck. I hope you all had fun. I hope everybody enjoyed watching tonight. I there was a there was a lot going on. It was a very very fun session. <laughs> also, this party and sharing their feelings. Am I right? <laughs> uh, I will crack. Them. <laughs> Paige is the one person <laughs> trying to get everyone to open up. <laughs> She's like, it's okay to talk about your feelings. You're allowed to be weak. Um, Look at my HP. Look at my AC. It's okay. Be fragile. Be open. It's healthy. Be, be Wizard smoking. mentality. Be fragile. Me giving all of my PCs trauma. Yes. <laughs> so yes, and we still have to decide what you all want to do about your magic sword. Um, but. Yeah, everybody, thank you for coming out tonight. If you haven't done so already, please give us a follow here on Twitch. Give a sub over on my YouTube. You could also sub to uh, the channel specific, I mean, not the channel, the show's specific YouTube, where I post up the VODs of all of our streams so you can watch them and catch up with all of our episodes. You can also follow me on Twitter and you can join my Discord, the Eternal Citadel, and be a part of our incredible community. If you haven't done so already, you should definitely go check out our wonderful players here. Litro, Sif, Maribel, and Yulia, they're all amazing streamers in their own right. They're fantastic people and VTubers. Be sure to check them out. They deserve all of your love and attention. Um, and uh, we will be back here on Monday for more Ashes of the Last War. But before that, this Friday, we are, I'm going to be here playing uh, Vampire the Masquerade uh, Bloodlines. So if you want to see some of that, be sure to come on by. I will greatly appreciate it. I'll be doing it at 5 p.m. Eastern. And we'll probably do a stream on Saturday and maybe Sunday as well uh, to fill the time in the void in my life. Uh, <laughs> so with all that being said, let's go find us a raid target. Do, 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 do. If you're a follower, please copy down the call to hugs. If you're a sub, please copy down the night's message. I'm just going to do a quick little looky look. Um... Okay. Okay. It's been a while since I've raided my my friend Bunny. She's playing Little Witch in the Woods. So Oh, a cute game. Yes. So we're gonna go raid my favorite little sucky bunny, um, as she is being cute small witch. Bunny cheeky. Alright, so copy down your messages. I really appreciate you guys coming out to watch us. I'm glad you enjoy. The, the wacky hijinks of this party and their emotionally closed off uh, natures. And I hope you come on by again. There will be plenty more adventures and mischief where this came from. All right, everybody, have a great night in the sweetest of dreams. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. We Bye -bye. love you.